Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today, we will be covering the heavy fog of controversies, cover-ups, and disasters behind the Disney Cruise Line. If you'd like to hear more about the troubling side of the House of Mouse, stay tuned. Quick disclaimer for our younger audience before we dive in. This story does include details of maritime incidents, death, illicit drug use, molestation, sexual assault, and the sexual assault of minors that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised for those under the age of 13. Please keep in mind that I'm not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I've done my research. Okay everyone, let's get into it. This particular episode is going to be very dark, convoluted, and is not comprehensive. I'm just gathering what information I was able to uncover. For legal purposes, I'll be letting everyone know when we get to information that is not 100% confirmed or verified, or when lawsuits are pending. Again, parents of young children, please be advised that this episode is going to be wildly controversial. Disney Cruise Line is operated by Disney Signature Experiences, the parent company that takes care of Disney's parks and resorts, experiences, and products. It was founded on May 3, 1995, and is currently headquartered in Celebration, Florida in the United States. As well as cruise ships, Disney Cruise Line also owns Castaway Cay, a private island in the Bahamas that is an exclusive port of call for Disney's ships, and Lighthouse Point a 700-acre property on the southern coast of Eleuthera, Bahamas that will be opening next year on June 6, 2024 as an exclusive port of call for the cruise line. Now that we know the brief history of the cruise line, let's look at Disney Cruise's fleet and the disasters associated with them. The current fleet consists of their first ship, the Disney Magic of the Magic Class, launched on July 30th of 1998, as well as her sister ship, the Disney Wonder, launched on August 15th, 1999. Then the Dream Class came about, starting on January 26, 2011, with Disney Dream and Disney Fantasy launched on March 31st, 2012. Finally, their newest ship is the Disney Wish, launched on June 29, 2022, and is apparently made for all Make-A-Wish children. They are working on two new ships for the Wish class, the first being Disney Treasure, which will launch in 2024. The other is to be announced, and they are planning another vessel for their Global class, which is also to be announced, and both of these ships are planned for 2025. I'm going to try to do this in chronological order, but it's a big web of deceit and information to untangle, so we are going to start by looking at the individual cruise ships and their incidents, and then we'll get into the bigger controversies associated with the cruise line overall. Sound good? Let's start in the early 2000s, between 2000 and 2010. The first incident I was able to uncover happened aboard the Disney Magic, and it was a smokestack fire on March 14, 2002. It was extinguished within an hour with no injuries. However, passengers were roused around 5 a.m. and told to don their life jackets and head to their muster stations, and they arrived at their destination roughly an hour and a half late. Later in the year, in August, there was an infectious disease aboard the Disney Wonder on their cruise from August 4th to the 8th in 2002. A crew member came down with rubella, also known as German measles. It is unclear whether or not this disease was spread to anyone else, but the reason it happened was an apparent disregard for CDC recommendations to have all crew vaccinated against the disease. With the cruise industry as a whole in 1998, citing potential cost as an excuse not to vaccinate. Rubella, if contracted by pregnant women, can cause birth defects, especially in the first trimester when women are not always aware they are pregnant. Children under 15 months old and people with suppressed immune systems are also at risk when it comes to rubella, as well as many other diseases. Pregnant women and young children are typically present on Disney cruise ships, which invites a family atmosphere, so this could have been deadly. You're going to see a pattern in the early 2000s of illness on these ships. The next incident happened aboard the Disney Magic on November 22, 2002. While at sea, up to 200 passengers became ill from consuming shrimp that was possibly contaminated by bacteria. During this same cruise, up to 275 passengers and crew were infected with a virus similar to norovirus. Norovirus is what we call the winter vomiting bug, stomach bug, or stomach flu. 
During this week-long cruise, which ended on November 30, 2002, 174 passengers and 23 crew would report having contracted some sort of flu-like illness, and this led to the cancellation of the next cruise for thorough cleaning of Disney magic. A couple of weeks later, on December 13, 2002, Disney Magic again had issues with gastrointestinal illnesses. Roughly 25 passengers reported that they'd contracted some sort of illness during the cruise. It's unclear what actions were taken. Here's where it starts to get uncomfortable. Almost three years later, on October 8, 2005, a girl under the age of 18, so legally a minor in most countries, claimed a member of the crew of Disney Wonder exposed himself to her while the ship was docked in the Bahamas. For the rest of the cruise, the crew member in question was kept separate from passengers and was immediately suspended when the ship returned to Florida. Disney actually reported this incident themselves, so we can give them a nod for that one. Again on the Disney Wonder on October 2, 2005, there was a sexually charged incident. The parents of a 13-year-old girl filed a lawsuit against Disney Cruise Line on March 22, 2006 after their daughter was allegedly sexually assaulted by a crew member during the cruise from Port Canaveral, and he threatened to throw her overboard if she told anyone. According to the Orlando Sentinel, the suit, quote, alleges the crew member falsely imprisoned, sexually assaulted, exposed himself to, and intentionally inflicted emotional distress. The man was later indicted for sexual abuse of the girl, and I sincerely hope she's gotten support for this and that she's doing well. On September 1, 2006, an employee from the Food and Beverage Department from the Disney Wonder was arrested by Brevard County Sheriff's deputies after he exposed himself to three women during a cruise. He was subsequently fired from Disney and allegedly deported back to Turkey. Disney Wonder was yet again the subject of disgusting controversy on January 1, 2007, when a 21-year-old male passenger from New York was arrested in the Bahamas after he allegedly sexually assaulted a 13-year-old girl during the four-day New Year's cruise from Port Canaveral to Nassau and back. In 2010, he would plead guilty to sexual assault of a minor in court and was sentenced in 2011 to 46 months in prison. The next incident actually comes from an older discussion board website called Disboards, where a passenger said the following about her Valentine's Day cruise on the Disney Magic. Quote, While doing the fireworks during the Pirates in the Caribbean deck party, there was an emergency code red call to the rear of the boat. My husband went to look and discovered that there was a misfire on the fireworks and appeared to be a fire by Palo Restaurant. I'm trying to find out more and we'll post more later. Here's what happened with the fireworks. About one quarter of the way through, one misfired and hit the side of the ship. The next one misfired and landed right next to Palos and started a fire. That set off the fire sprinklers on deck 10 aft. Our assistant server is part of the fire team. He said it was a huge mess because the captain sent everyone to the pirate buffet instead of Palos. The captain then sent everyone to the right place and everything seems okay. All brunches at Palos today were canceled, but dinners were okay. No one was injured, thank goodness. On April 7, 2007, there was a security issue that delayed embarkation for a seven-day cruise on the Disney Magic to Key West, Georgetown, Cozumel, and Castaway Cay. According to local news reports at the time, the ship was held over and evacuated as well as the cruise ship terminal, and dogs sniffed out a suspicious package addressed to a crew member. It turned out to be repair parts for the crew member's computer, and the ship left that night, keeping its original itinerary. Again with Disney Magic, on March 8, 2008, there was an alleged incident with the propulsion system that led to propulsion problems that affected the ship's arrival into port and how smooth the ship runs. Passengers were apparently given an onboard credit of $100 to compensate. Take this with a grain of salt as it also comes from a Disney Cruise discussion board. Later that year, on September 1, 2008, a passenger had this to say about their cruise on the Disney Magic, again posting this to a discussion board. Quote, Hi, just got off the 15-day cruise from LA to Orlando through the Panama Canal. Great cruise. About six nights ago, however, there was a bright star call over the ship's PA directing crew to deck four midship. When I asked a crew member what this meant, they sort of shrugged it off. I asked our room purser the following day and he told me that someone had tried to jump off the deck from deck four. The person was also stopped and taken off the boat the following day while at port in Aruba. 
Also, when we docked, the boat wasn't cleared by U.S. Customs for about three hours while they searched for a single missing foreign-born passenger on the ship. Otherwise, great trip on a great cruise line. The Disney magic can't catch a break, y'all, and this one is the worst so far. In November of 2009, there was a really bad accident at 2.30 p.m. on November 18th at the entrance to the San Gervasio ruins where a red and yellow Jeep Polar from Executive Car Rental collided and two people were killed. It appears that one vehicle traveling at an undetermined speed was coming out of the ruins when it was hit by the other Jeep, which was reported to be traveling at 120 kilometers per hour or 75 miles per hour at the time of the crash. Because both Jeeps were overloaded, some of the crew's passengers were hurled from the vehicles while others remained twisted in the wreckage. One 21-year-old woman died at the scene, and at least four were transported to nearby hospitals in grave condition, and one of them died there later. The driver of the second car was taken into custody. That is so horrific. Rest in peace to the victims of this tragic accident. According to the Nassau Guardian, on November 21st, 2009, two armed men ambushed and robbed a group of 17 tourists from the Disney Wonder while they were touring Nassau. According to police, the tourists were touring Earth Village, Dunmore Street, in Chippingham, a little before 1 p.m. with their tour guide when the two men armed with shotguns accosted them. The tour guide was tied up, and the tourists were ordered to the ground and robbed of their cash, passports, cell phones, credit cards, and other personal items. The police would end up arresting a 49-year-old man they believed to be responsible for the theft. Five days later, on November 26, 2009, aboard the Disney Wonder, the ship was in transit from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands to the Bahamas when they suffered engine failure. She had four of her five engines still operational until the number one main diesel generator suffered a short circuit in the alternator winding, which caused a shutdown of this generator and a release of internal combustion gas and smoke from the cylinder head release valves. The resulting voltage drop caused the undervoltage shutdowns of the fuel pumps of generators 2, 4, and 5. This would cause a total blackout throughout the ship, and she was sent adrift, with the emergency generator kicking in shortly after that. Full power and propulsion would be restored to the vessel after 45 minutes, and she finished her voyage without further incident. This failure would require a rewinding of the generator, and this would cost $1 million. On January 1, 2010, an anonymous poster on Cruise Critic wrote the following about their experience on the Disney Wonder. Quote, Me, the hubby, and three kids set sail January 7, 2010 for a three-day Bahamas on Disney Wonder. By midnight the second night, our 13-year-old was sick and about 16 hours later, it hit the 11-year-old. Ship doctor said GI infection and gave us anti-nausea meds. He was cranky and rude, which is unacceptable when dealing with sick children. In his defense, however, I quickly discovered why. I'll bet he and his staff were up all night dealing with sick people. By the second morning after the first kid got sick, all buffet stations were no longer self-serve. Even the beverage stations on deck were roped off and crew members were handling drinks. Yikes. This sounds like a poorly handled situation and does not sound like a magical Disney experience to me. On February 13, 2010, there was a gale that swept across the Bahamas and made it impossible for the Disney Magic to leave port, leaving some anxious passengers stuck in Port Canaveral. It was delayed a couple of days later, and consequently the port of Call in Saint Martin was cancelled altogether. The delay not only impacted those returning home, but also those embarking on the next cruise scheduled. On January 25th, 2011, there were safety concerns regarding the Disney Wonders port of call in Mazatlan following three street crime incidents near the cruise terminal, and so Disney Wonder dropped calls there through April, which is the end of the season there. On January 17th, 2011, the Royal Caribbean International ship Monarch of the Seas and the Disney Dream were shown in a precarious situation on YouTube. In the YouTube video, Disney Dream is seen drifting very closely to the Royal Caribbean ship in Orlando, Florida. When asked about it, Disney Cruise Line officials stated the ship was never in danger of colliding with the other vessel, stating the ships were no closer than 20 or 30 feet apart, though a Royal Caribbean crew member would state that the ships barely missed one another by a couple of feet. Quote, yes, we are aware of the incident. Monarch of the Seas was anchored and the Disney ship cast it off and drifted close to our vessel, said Royal Caribbean spokeswoman Cynthia Martinez. She never acknowledged how close the two ships were, but it still sounds like a close call. 
In February of 2011, there was a massive fire in Nassau that forced the Disney Dream to stay in port and delay disembarkation for the passengers. There were no reported injuries due to the fire. According to a crew member, on March 22, 2011, aboard the Disney Wonder, Rebecca Corium went missing. She was one of the youth activities counselors and apparently went overboard around 3 a.m. They searched the ship, but they never found her. This counselor went missing during the middle of a seven-day cruise. The woman was only 24 years old, which is scary since that is how old I am. I can only imagine the fear of going overboard and knowing that you're more than likely going to drown. What was even more devastating was the fact that her parents had heard from her the day before, with her parents stating, quote, She sent me a message on Monday, and she was going to ring me on Tuesday, and that's when she disappeared. As a parent, my heart breaks for them. May she rest in peace. On October 10, 2011, both Carnival Cruise Line's Carnival Sensation and the Disney Dream were delayed departing Port Canaveral due to weather. They still managed to hit all their ports of call, just in a different order, and returned as scheduled. This next one is a doozy, y'all. A lot happens. On the Disney Magic on Sunday, December 4, 2011, at approximately 4 p.m., there was a ship-wide power outage. For around 5 to 10 minutes, the ship was entirely still and silent. No vibrations, no humming from the ship's engines, just the sound of the heavy seas lapping at the side of the ship's hull and the whistling of the windy day. Electrical power would be restored, but the ship still had no propulsion, which as a passenger would be incredibly troubling. It took more than an hour and a half for the propulsion to be restored, and they were late to their first port of call in St. Martin. Later on Wednesday, December 7, 2011, passengers noticed that the condiments at the burger grill, Pluto's Doghouse, were missing, and they were no longer allowed to serve themselves at the Top Cider Buffet, with the dip for the bread missing in all three of the main dining halls. Sounds strange, right? Well, according to a server, there was an outbreak of sickness similar to food poisoning, all in one trip. On December 28, 2011, Disney Fantasy would face an incident that is not Disney's fault in any way. The Disney Fantasy was under construction, at this time in the Meyer Werft shipyard in Poppenburg, Germany. Mysteriously, there was a water valve leak that caused $1.2 million worth of damage to the vessel, and this was apparently some form of vandalism. Access to the ship was restricted after this. We move on to 2012. On February 5th, 2012, there were multiple reports that shortly after the Disney Dream pulled out of Port Canaveral and was halfway down the channel, it turned around and went back to the pier. The ship was met on shore by ambulances and fire trucks, indicating a medical emergency. In May of 2012, Yahoo News reports that Katie McCaffrey had her phone stolen while taking part in a Disney Cruise Line vacation aboard the Disney Wonder. The pictures being automatically uploaded from her iPhone appeared to show a Disney Cruise employee named Nelson in various poses using the phone's camera. So, McCaffrey contacted Disney, but not before posting the pictures to a hilarious Facebook page she's entitled, Stolen iPhone Adventures. Quote, it was stolen on board the Disney Wonder Cruise Line back in April. His photos are just making it to my photo stream, she writes on the page. McCaffrey also wrote her own captions for Nelson's photos, including, quote, Here's a beautiful sunset Nelson had time to capture all on my stolen iPhone. New York Magazine later reported that Disney confiscated the allegedly stolen iPhone and placed Nelson on leave while they investigated the incident. In August of 2012, it was reported by The Mirror that on board the Disney Magic, the crew was apparently snorting lines of what seemed to be cocaine on their brakes. There was a whistleblower who brought this to light, and according to them, workers not only took part in cocaine, but wild parties and casual sex as well. A former worker is quoted as saying, quote, It's all very family friendly. On deck, you have people in Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck outfits performing tricks, but downstairs, staff are sniffing coke. So many people are doing it, it's an open secret. People even do it during their shift. Staff work very long hours, and it's their only release. Disney investigated this claim, and it's unclear what came of this investigation. 2013 heats up quite a bit, so just warning you. This next one is another incident that doesn't have to do with Disney, but went viral back in the day to make the House of Mouse look worse. A woman was arrested as her, her husband, and their children were wrapping up a vacation in Port Canaveral aboard the Disney Dream because she shoplifted cigarettes from Walmart 22 years prior in 1991. She also failed to pay her $85 in court costs back in 1991, and this led to an outstanding warrant. 
it isn't uncommon for people to be arrested from cruise ships for outstanding warrants. This next incident is one of my worst nightmares. If you guys didn't see my get to know me video, you might not know that I'm the proud mother of a beautiful young son. Well, Disney Cruise Line messed with someone else's kid in March of 2013 when a passenger dropped off their three-year-old son off at an on-ship childcare facility. I'll never use one of those and we'll get into why later on. In this particular daycare, each child was given an electronic wristband tracking system that would approximate the child location on the ship. Well, when the father returned to retrieve his son, the child was nowhere to be found. He spoke to the child care staff on how to proceed looking for his missing child, and according to him, quote, he said the next step was to check the tracking band system, which would pinpoint my son's location. We walked over to the computer, and as they pulled it up, everyone got very quiet. The screen showed my son's band as unreadable. Luckily, the child was found an hour later, and the passengers would write to the cruise director requesting a full refund. Disney actually said they could not offer a refund, but did offer a two-day Disney World Park Pass for the family with limited access. Hell no. I would be livid. I would turn that ship upside down. I am heated with this one, guys. Again in March of 2013, a four-year-old boy had to be pulled from a pool on board the Disney Fantasy and airlifted to Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children in Orlando, Florida. This child nearly drowned due to the fact there was no lifeguards on board, and the cruise ship left port 45 minutes later than expected. It's unknown what became of the child, and I pray that he was okay. In 2013, Maria Anna Rice Martins, a dining room server for the Disney Cruise Line, was injured when the ship was docked in the Bahamas and she was struck by a car. She managed to return to the ship where she received care for her injuries, and they concluded she wasn't seriously injured. However, into 2014, she returned to working for Disney but found that nerve damage still made her work almost impossible. The court would end up deciding she would receive $1 million for pain and suffering, $1 million for punitive damages, and $2 million for lost wages for a total of $4 million. If you don't know what punitive damages are, they are basically you suck damages assigned by the court for doing something generally seen as awful. Emily G. Baker here on YouTube taught me that. Make sure to check her out. On August 5th, 2014, the Disney Dream left port in Orlando, Florida as scheduled. Two hours into the cruise, a crew member was caught on camera molesting an 11-year-old girl in an elevator around 3.22 p.m. The 33-year-old suspect, Milton Braganza, managed to escape investigation and prosecution by Florida authorities due to the fact the crime was not reported until the following day, though Disney Cruise Line would argue it did report the crime while still in port on August 5th. The Port Canaveral Police confirmed that this was not true, and Disney Cruise Line changed their tune. Disney Cruise Line has been very slimy in their handling of this case, having paid for the crew member to be sent back to his home country of India, and he was not prosecuted. They've just kind of swept it under the rug, and that feels very icky to me. I don't know about you guys. That brings us up to 2019. There may be some stuff in between 2014 and 2019, but this is what I was able to uncover. There was an incident on or about May 23, 2019, where a cruise line employee, Monica Golubovich, injured her left arm, neck, and back aboard the Disney Wonder while lifting a heavy tray of meals, according to the lawsuit filed. According to the complaint, the defendant, in this case the Disney Cruise Line, did not employ the use of trolleys on the Disney Wonder, which means crew members have to carry the food. I used to work in the food industry, so I can understand this. Lifting heavy freight always hurt, and rolling 50 pounds of pizza dough at a time really sucked. This lawsuit appears to be ongoing, so the results of it are unknown at this time. We're going into 2020. Disney Cruise Line gets into a lot of hot water in the 2020s, so fasten your seatbelts, folks. We are going to talk briefly about the COVID-19 pandemic. Please keep the comments politically neutral as we are not here to discuss vaccines, masks, or mandates. We are simply here for the facts of this lawsuit against Disney Cruise Line. They are currently disputing allegations from passengers who claimed that they and their family members contracted COVID-19 during a March 2020 cruise on board the Disney Fantasy. The plaintiffs, or the passengers, claimed that Disney, quote, allowed passengers to fully participate in the subject cruise as if there was no COVID-19 outbreak or threat thereof aboard the vessel. And this comes directly from the court documents. What did Disney have to say? 
Well, their spokeswoman Cynthia Martinez said the following, quote, our thoughts continue to be with those around the world who have been affected by COVID-19. We disagree with the allegations and will respond to them in court. No guests or crew reported symptoms of COVID-19 while aboard the Disney Fantasy during the March 7, 2020 sailing. Disney Cruise Line communicated health and safety information with guests in advance of and during their sailing and had numerous protocols in place at the time. We do have to note that passengers were required to pass a health screening and undergo temperature checks before they boarded. Disney is still facing these four federal lawsuits as far as I can tell, and so the results of these lawsuits are currently unknown. On June 23, 2020, a Filipino man named Eddie Burgos Ragadon died aboard the Disney Wonder. He was employed as a painter for Disney Cruise Line, and he'd actually visited the ship's medical center a few days before with chills, according to another crew member. He was not tested for coronavirus, and apparently Disney planned on testing him for COVID-19 posthumously, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, also known as the CDC. Rest in peace to this man, and I hope his family has found peace. We come to the most recent controversy and the most disturbing in my opinion. In September of 2021, it was reported that two Vermont parents were suing Disney Cruise Line for $20 million, alleging that their daughter, who was three years old at the time of the incident, was sexually abused by a 12-year-old male passenger. The incident occurred on January 9, 2020, when the child was in the care of the Disney Youth Club staff. This incident is why I would never, ever put my child into a cruise line's child care. The young girl was allegedly groped and touched sexually in inappropriate areas and was unable to break free from the assault. The complaint also claims that the youth club staff, quote, failed to recognize the sexual assault and therefore allowed the ongoing abuse suffered. This is a horrific situation that is ongoing, and I honestly hope that they get the $20 million. It's the least that Disney can provide for this family that has suffered so. I hope the best for this family moving forward and that they have gotten emotional support through this difficult time in their lives. As we can tell, Disney Cruise Line doesn't have a squeaky clean record. I don't think I'd ever take a Disney Cruise Line cruise myself seeing all these sexual assaults and molestations. Again, Disney Cruise Line is a company, and they have the ability moving forward to continue to improve, and I sincerely hope they do. I don't think the company is evil per se, but I do think they have things they need to address and need to think of the human beings that these incidents affect. To all of the victims, I hope they have found peace and can move forward. Thanks so much to our lovely patrons for subscribing and supporting the channel and myself as a creator. You guys are awesome and it really does help us out. If you'd like to support this channel and future episodes, go to patreon.com slash shipwrecksunday to join. Thank you for tuning in to this bonus episode of Shipwreck Sunday. If you liked this episode and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you liked this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a 5-star review as it does help us reach more listeners like you. If you have any ships you'd like us to cover, please leave us a comment and you might hear your favorite ship here on the podcast. Check out our community tab for updates and interact with us. And we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tune in this Sunday for the story of the Titan submarine. Thank you so much, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.